What's up everybody, it's your boy Phil Porto, photographer, videographer, and educator. And today on the channel, I wanted to introduce something a little bit different than what I've previously been doing. I'm gonna continue to do the quick tips, continue to do the educational videos that I've been doing, but I also wanted to introduce something new. And what it is, is when I started the channel, I did say that I wanted it to be a place where I not only taught you guys, but I also allowed myself to learn and grow as a photographer, videographer, and educator. And so this part of the channel is going to be allowing others to teach me certain things to help me grow as a photographer, videographer, and entrepreneur. And so this series, I'm actually partnering with an awesome clothing company called Dream Drift Apparel. And what they're all about is pursuing your dreams, but staying grounded. And so as I pursue my dream to be a better photographer, Photographer, videographer, and educator. I want to push myself, but I also want to stay true to who I feel I am called to be as a photographer, videographer, and educator and entrepreneur. And so as I go out and I learn and I allow others to critique me, I want it to make me a better version of me. Not so that I can be a version of them, but so I can push myself. So the reason I'm doing a intro for this instead of just allowing you to see it in the video is because the initial idea came to me and then the execution of it has been a little bit challenging from the get-go. Um, so I've recorded two of these in the series so far, but the climate of our country is a little bit different than um, when I first had the idea. And so the climate of our country has gotten a little bit heavy with everything that's going on. And so the first um, video in this series and the second video actually are with two amazing Fuji photographers, Derek Fossbender and Suzanne Stein, who are amazing street photographers in New York City. And what we realized when I went out there and from like talking to them and then experiencing it myself is that the climate of New York City is a little bit different. A place where you normally would go and there are photographers, uh, professional, amateur, tourists walking around side by side all throughout the city with no, you know, um, no, no problems, no uh, animosity or anything like that has become a place where when you have a photo camera in your hand, everyone is def defensive and a little bit apprehensive to interact with you or allow you to interact with them. So my experience challenging myself to learn uh, street photography um, was, you know, met with some hostility. Um, and so it was not the easiest experience and it's not an easy experience right now for those who are street photographers. So I wanted to give that preface that we did what we could as best as we could in these videos, but there will be a part two once the climate of our country changes, God willing, sooner rather than later. So here's the video of me going out with Derek Fossbender and learning how to be a better street photographer. Being from New York, one thing I've always loved, but I've never really spent a ton of time doing is street photography. Um, I've dabbled with it. I've had fun with it. As I chill in the city, I pass by, capture some things that I like here and there. But there's a difference between like picking up the camera when you're walking the streets and like intentionally going out as a street photographer and trying to capture the beauty of like the city that you're in. Um, there's a way to do it as a tourist and then there's a way to do it as someone that's skilled in it. Um, if you remember in my intro video, I talked about how I don't just want this to be something that it's Uncle Phil teaching and you guys have to sit there and kind of learn what I'm talking about. But this isn't just a channel for me to sit here giving you guys information for you guys to apply as if I'm like, the god of photography and I've arrived, um, there's still a lot that I don't know. There's a lot of avenues that I haven't pursued. And one of those is street photography. And so what better way to learn it than from someone who does it well? Um, and so recently with everything that had kind of gone on um, during coronavirus and kind of testing other waters and just kind of exploring um, and you know the coverage that we were doing over all the protests, I actually got connected with this man right here, uh, Derek Fassbender. And he is an incredible street photographer from New York. Um, and he works for B&H. And our paths actually, you know, crossed because of a mutual good friend by the name of Miles Whit Boyer, um, AKA 
all the abs. Um, and if you look at his Instagram, you'll know exactly why. Like male model slash photographer, um, slash mom heartbreaker. And so, <laughs> and so we decided that, you know, we, now that I'm here in the city, that we were going to link up. Uh, we actually linked up over, um, YouTube and doing some videos about covering the protests and how, you know, we thought it was the right way to go about it. Um, so first, Derek, what up? Thank you for being oh, on the man. channel today. Um, so give our viewers who maybe have never checked you out. And if you haven't, please pause the video link in the description to his Instagram account. He's a Fuji photographer and he's a beast. Um, but tell people how you got into street photography and kind of your approach to street photography. Well, growing up in the 80s, New York was gritty. It was, there was everything that I love about the city now and that I take pictures of. The graffiti, the characters. New York is a, a city of people, you know. That sounds really like, obviously it's a yeah, city yeah. of people, but <laughs> for anybody, if you haven't been here, the people make the city. Yeah. And so what I love about New York is just, you look all around us, it's like you could find a studio anywhere, there's a photo op anywhere. You can get in the craziest conversations. I can't tell you how many times I've had crazy conversations in everything from a bathroom line to, uh, you know, standing on the subways. Just, just the people. It's magic. The city's magic. So yeah. I love to capture that. And I love to show people what my city is about. And for people who have never been here, I want you to take a trip here through my photos. For people that used to live here and don't live here anymore, I want you to feel like you're back home. So it's what it's about yeah that's awesome man because like growing up in the city and like the fact that you know our team comes here every single month when you try to explain new york to somewhere else you know they really can't get it you know like movies tv shows that really doesn't do it justice you know like i, I try to tell people there's places that have diverse like demographics and races and whatnot but then there's a place of diversity and that's New York. You know, New York isn't just diverse people living next to each other. It's everybody is New York and it doesn't matter all the, you know, extra stuff. Um, and so I love, that's one thing I loved about your photos. You know, when we first connected, um, it was a photo that you posted, uh, of the protests and it was a bunch of young black men who went out after the riots and they went out early in the morning to clean up their city, you know? So you have like the, the news and the media and everyone's portraying New York rioters as this horrible thing. They don't know how to be civil to, to get their voice heard, this, that, and whatever. And then you got baller photographers being like, no, check this out. This is what my city's actually doing, you know? And, and it spoke, spoke volumes of your work. So I want to push myself in this episode to get that vibe. Um, so street photography in itself, if our viewers, you know, have only seen a little bit of it, um, is a big deal. You know, you're not just spraying and praying as you walk, you know, like some people do, you know, and I, I watched one, uh, photographer and the video kind of went viral that his style was very like rude and intrusive. Um, and he was a big name street photographer until they found out how he was doing it. And he was just like getting in people's faces without their permission and like being very, very hostile about it, you know? And like, I think that's another bad rap that street photographers get is that they're intrusive, they're rude, uh, they do anything for their shot, but that's not the case. Um, and so, like I said in the intro, Derek is here to kind of just help me know the best ways to go about doing street photography. So I asked him to give me five tips that that I can then go out with him and apply it. And then you'll see me and Derek out there shooting, trying to apply these tips while Brandon captures it for us. Um, and then Derek will come back and kind of critique my work and I'll be able to kind of share those critiques with you guys. Um, so Derek, do me a favor and give me five tips that you say are kind of essential to street photography. Well, number one, you have to, you gotta stay with inside yourself in a certain sense where shoot what you know. You know, a lot of people, they try to do too much and they come out and they think that street is any different than any other genre of photography and it's not. The same techniques that I use to get successful shots or what I like as a successful shot is the same technique that somebody would use as a wedding photographer, as a lifestyle, a commercial. Um, so really stay with what you're interested in. If you like people, transition that to the street you know, capture people. You can still capture a landscape. I do a lot of cityscapes where 
I introduce a human element, even if it's just somebody walking by. Yeah. To me, I love people. I think people make a shot more interesting. Yeah. Um, and that separates my shot from anybody else's shot. Yeah. You could take a picture of a storefront, but now when you have a picture of a storefront with somebody walking through it, that moment's never going to happen again. Yeah. So you're capturing that moment. Uh, second, respect the neighborhood. Okay. So you got to respect the neighborhood, the people in it. So right now we're down in Lower East Side, right? So Lower East Side um, is an area that, you know, it's, it's far reaching, it's changing, but there's a culture here. And the more you know about the neighborhood, that is what helps you capture it. And when you know about the people that live there, that helps you interact with them. Yeah. I go in a lot of dicey neighborhoods and everybody thinks I'm a cop, I'm a gentrifier, <laughs> I'm just there trying to exploit people. Um, so I normally I carry around uh, a book. So I have my coffee table book that I, I use a smaller bag now. I used to carry a backpack and I kept my coffee table book in there. And it's easy to flip it out and show people like, this is what I do. Yeah. So when people are curious about street photography and about why I'm out there with a the camera, because a lot of people don't get it. A yeah. lot of people think you're out here with a camera. Like, what are you taking yeah. pictures for? You know, and I'm like, it's not for a commercial. It's not for this. It's not for that. It's just because this is what I'm passionate about, yeah. um, which leads into my next one, which is talk to people, you know, always be talking to people. That's something that I do, even if I'm not um, intent on taking a photo, yeah. um, walking by and passing like, Hey man, nice hat. Or uh, I love your style. You know, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever gets me going. Otherwise I get lost in my headphones. Yeah. A lot of times I take my headphones off because I want to feel connected to the environment. I want to feel like I'm immersed in the neighborhood I'm shooting. And the biggest tip I have for street photography is even if you're not taking a picture of somebody, your camera is not your main tool. Your mouth is, your personality, your yeah, smile. Good. I've had people tell me my smile and my eyes are what brought them in, that what disarmed them. Yeah. And it's about disarming people. It's about making people feel comfortable with you. You know, you want somebody to feel like you're not a threat, like you're there for a purpose and it's a good purpose yeah, and not a bad purpose. Talking to people gets me out of my, you know, just going tunnel vision in my head, just yeah. taking pictures. So I want to interact. A lot of times I just have a conversation with somebody and I'm not thinking of taking a picture of them. And then, you, you know what? You're cool. I like I like this. I'm, yeah. I, I want to remember this. Do you mind if I capture a portrait of you? Um, and by interacting, what are you doing? You're telling a story. So tell a story, work a scene, take a wide shot, go in, take a detail. You know, I'm shooting with a prime, so I have to move my feet. Yeah. You know, if I want to, if I want to work a scene, I got to go here. I got to go there. I'm looking up. I'm looking down. I'm looking all over. I want pictures of the people. I want pictures of the buildings, yeah. um, stickers, graffiti, any little thing that gives you a, a piece of that neighborhood's identity. If you're walking around a neighborhood, you should have a very good sense of what that neighborhood is like by looking at your pictures from the day. You know, you brought up spraying and praying. And while you shouldn't spray and pray, you also shouldn't, I call it princess chasing. I don't know if that's uh you could use that term now in 2020. <laughs> that's that's the term we used to use when we would go out and it was like my brother called me a princess chaser. He's like, you only chase the princesses. Yeah. He's like, you know, I do the same thing with photos sometimes, but it's not good. You have to get yeah. break yourself out of that cycle that's where good. You shouldn't just be looking for that cover shot. You shouldn't just be looking for that Instagrammable photo. Yeah. Leads me to my last point, which is set your camera up for success. And I saved the gear for last because this is the least important piece of the street photography journey is your gear. But when you need it, you need it to function well, you need it to function quick, you need yeah. it to function accurately. So whether you're the type of person who likes to zone focus, um, or whether you're the type of person who wants to rely on all the bells and whistles, you have to be able to react. Yeah. So if I see something walk by right now, I have to be able to get my camera up. I got to be ready to go. None of this camera on the back. <laughs> like, what are you wearing a rifle in the year 1800? Like, no, right here, ready to go. A lot of times it's in my hand. It's wrapped up, you know, yeah. wrist around my uh, strap around my wrist, ready to go. I shoot in either an aperture priority or a um, shutter priority. A lot of people, when I used to teach, first thing I asked out of the gate was, how many people here shoot manual? Everybody's like this. I shoot manual. I only shoot manual. And I'm like, 
you're an idiot, you're a fool, you're not gonna get any good pictures today, good luck. So, you know, however you shoot, whether you're a wide open shooter, whether you're stopped down, whether you like a little bit of motion to your photos, whether you like to freeze motion, whatever your style is, make sure that you're able to do it quickly because no one is gonna stop and be like, hey, bro, you get that picture? Hold on, let me let me walk back here and do it again for you. It's not gonna yeah. happen. Yeah. Things happen fast, yeah. so you gotta be able to react. Don't make your camera fail you yeah. when you need it That's most. Good. You know, you, you're not gonna have a lot of time to see things. It's sensory overload a lot of times. Yeah. You gotta react quick. Ooh. So I need to be able to get up, get my shot, and not be like, ah, oh, damn, I was set for the subway, and now I'm yeah. out in broad daylight and my picture's washed. So. Yeah, that's good, man. So those are five killer points. So the first one you were talking about, like, do what you love, but push yourself, you know, which is the whole point of this video. You know, like, I could easily just continue to shoot the things that I shoot week in and week out. Um, but I don't want to just go out there and be like, oh, I'm good with people, so I'm just going to take people photos. You know, I want to kind of look at the scenery. And so that's actually funny that you were saying that because this company that I'm wearing, they're called Dream Drift. And that's what it's all about is like, be a dreamer, but don't drift so far away from like your actual reality. Yeah. that it's no longer like you, you know? So capture who you are in the dream that you're kind of doing. So that's kind of what I want to apply for today um, and kind of build that relationship that you were talking about. Cause there's one photo that I was showing Brandon yesterday of this guy in a wife beater and he's got this big old like cowboy, like Izzy. red, white and blue looking hat. That's, that's Izzy. Yeah. <laughs> so I was showing Brandon, I'm like, you know, like, Derek took these dope photos of like the area, but then you see a photo like this and you know there was communication there. You know, you don't just come up, take that kind of photo, dip out and not get decked. You know, like there has to be some kind of communication that went down. So, uh, so building that kind of relationship, like yesterday we were walking and there was this like really cool trio just kind of chilling. And it was weird because the city felt weird, it felt weirder than it's ever felt before. People kind of felt like they had a chip on their shoulder, you know, like as if they're expecting you to do something wrong the whole time um and you're just like man this is kind of like an angry city yeah it's like a tense family dinner everywhere i go uh and so these three were kind of just chilling and like i walked by and kind of like that thing you said like nope you need to go back you know i just kept feeling that so i went back and i was like yo you guys are the happiest people in freaking new york city today like you look better than everybody else i need to take your photo and I was like, I'm not a creep. Here's my photo. Like, here's my business card. So, you know, uh, and so they were like, yeah, sure. You can take our photo. And they were just like, you could have taken that photo and walked by and we wouldn't have even known. Like, and I was like, yeah, but it wouldn't have been the same. You know, like you guys knew that I was taking it. You guys knew that there was something special about you uh, and you let me in, you know, and that was the biggest thing for me was kind of overcoming that conversation. You know, like a a as a photographer, you can get so used to like the fact that you're hired to do something as opposed to like asking permission to do something. So pushing myself for that. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna go out and we're gonna hit the street. Uh, and I also am one of those people that always shoots manual for everything as a purist. <laughs> Not like, today, oh, Junior. <laughs> uh, and that's why I missed a killer shot yesterday of these people going down the subway right above, you know, uh, the street. We were kind of in 34th Street, Herald Square area. and. We saw a bunch of people get out of these unmarked black cars um, and they were all dressed in camo from head to toe. And I was like, yo, this is kind of sketchy. So I took out my camera, got them all getting out of the car and then walking. And there was a dope shot of this guy and girl going down the subway. But since I was in manual, the shot right above was fine. But the fire money shot uh, took, a, took a turn for the worst. Phil so gonna learn today. I'm gonna learn today. <laughs> so, I'm looking forward to it. So we're going to now hit the streets um, and we want you guys to just kind of watch and kind of implement these tips as well. Uh, Derek, like I said, is a beast when it comes to street photography, which is why he's here right now. Uh, I, he's he's blushing. Um, oh, and another thing to help with the whole like them thinking you're trying to gentrify. If you do what he does and you wear a Wu-Tang mask during the coronavirus, that'll uh, disarm you a little bit as well. So, <laughs> so we're going to get ready to hit the streets now. Um, and so we hope you guys learned something from this. And I hope that Derek's tips can be something that you apply, whether you're in Chicago, uh, Indiana, Kentucky, I don't even care where you are. Let's bring um, it to Kentucky. Kentucky, yeah, Kentucky. Uh, we're going to do an episode in Kentucky. <laughs> you watch. Bring me. I want to yeah, go. We're gonna I want to go. take over Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> so wherever you are, 
kind of take these tips and go out to your city and document it because we're in a weird time and being able to kind of look back at these photos I think will be key. So we'll see you guys soon. Derek will then critique my photos and tell me how good or how horrible they were. I know he's already given me the you already. suck. <laughs> uh, so wish me luck and here we go. So aside from the five points that Derek was giving me um, on how to be a good street photographer, I wanted to give a little bit of insight of what I personally experienced when I was with him and some tips um, or, or things that I learned in the process. So we're going to show you guys some of the images that were captured by Derek and I. Um, and shout out to Brandon for capturing all the behind the scenes. Um, but I want to talk about some things that I learned from shooting side by side with Derek because it was a really, really cool experience. So the first was Derek's confidence and it was way different than my confidence. He would take a shot and he would kind of know that he got it. He didn't need to second guess it. He didn't constantly have to look at the back of the camera to make sure that he got what he wanted. Um, he just kind of kept it moving as opposed to me. I was constantly asking myself, is this photo worth taking? Should I take this photo? Um, why sh would I take this photo? Why shouldn't I take this photo? And so that confidence was very, very different between the two of us. And that isn't something that I struggle with when it comes to my day-to-day -day work, whether it be weddings or corporate or anything like that. So I guess that is something that comes with time, but confidence was a huge factor. I feel like confidence really helped him set his images apart from mine. The second was with that confidence, he saw things before they happened. So this image right here where these two guys are crossing, um, I got an image of one of those guys and it was not as epic as the two about to cross paths. And so what I noticed was that Derek was constantly in the right place all the time. Like he saw it before it happened and got himself to where he needed to be to capture that image. So that image was amazing and far better than mine. And the one with the dog shoes, he actually saw that from across the street, had us cross, and then he went and got the image. And so he was constantly looking around and seeing his situation and his surroundings and being able to kind of see something before I was able to. So I think that also would come with time is being able to spot certain things that might be uh, blind to the naked eye. That leads me to my next point. Derek had such patience to capture the shot that he saw in his mind. So I would pick up my camera when I saw something, I'd snap the image and then I'd kind of keep it moving. Derek would see something, wait for it, and then capture that image. So like this image of these two gentlemen coming around the corner, I took it from another side of the wall, which was the obvious way to take it. Derek was kneeling down, waiting for them to come around the corner because he saw how much better of an image it could be. And so Derek had a lot, a lot of patience. Matter of fact, this image right here of this young boy dribbling the ball couldn't have happened like more perfectly. And he timed it perfectly. He saw it probably 90 seconds to two minutes before it actually happened. And so we were all talking and all of a sudden Derek was gone and he stayed in one position and we had no clue what he was doing. And then he came and showed us the image and we were blown away. The perfect timing of the ball dribbling and the eyes of the ball looking straight at the camera. It was just killer. So patience, I think is really, really key and something that I would actually need to work on myself to make sure that I could execute um, a better photo than just the see it, capture it, keep it moving style that I'm accustomed to. The next one, I kind of touched on it a little bit, but Derek did not settle for the obvious shot. I did. I saw something and I just took it. Derek would constantly like look at the situation and say, okay, where can I get a better photo of this? And so he would move around, he would capture it and it would be incredible. So like this one here of this worker, you know, I took it from the obvious angle, but when he stepped back, he captured so much more of the scene and was able to tell way better of a story than I was able to. And so I tried to apply that a little bit later in our shoot, like this shot right here. We saw this bike, Derek was taking a picture of the bike and I loved it and I love bright colors. So I wanted to take a picture of the bike too. But when I started looking at my scene, I saw the garbage men and I was like, man, I love taking photos of people like out there working hard, doing their job. And so I, 
mix those two, the bike in the corner, and then try to draw your eye more so to the garbage man. So that's something I noticed quickly and tried to apply. Um, there's still obviously work that I can do to better myself at that, but that was just an instant obvious thing that I saw by working with Derek that I wanted to apply instantly into my workflow. And so the last point was something that we crack on him a lot about after we noticed it, but he's got this huge love for ATM machines and he captures them in really, really artistic ways, which is kind of weird um, because I look at an ATM and I'm like, all right, cool. And I kind of keep it moving, but he sees an ATM and he finds a cool way, a cool perspective and he captures it and it actually becomes a really, really dope photo. And so what I noticed was like we were walking one day in Chinatown and I saw this ATM that he was capturing and me and Brandon were like, we were here yesterday and we didn't even notice that ATM. But I did take a photo of a gentleman that was sitting right in front of that ATM. And so Derek's able to not only see a, a scene, but he's able to take something simple and make it into beautiful art, which is really, really cool because you know, it, it, it's great to have subjects to be able to tell stories, but there are also things that, you know, can, can just be by themselves that can be a great photo within itself. So those are quick five things that I learned from my time with Derek. I know that there's so much more that I could learn. There's so much more to the art of street photography, and I'm looking forward to more and more time with Derek and being able to experience what he does um, over time and push myself to do more and more street photography. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you can actually go out there and try to apply these these tips in your own life whether you're a street photographer or not I feel like it can help you be a better photographer in general and it's really helping me question you know certain things uh, of why I overthink or why I, I don't see um, beauty sometimes in the simple things that that can be captured. So I want to implement these things in street photography, but also in my day-to-day -day work. And hopefully you guys are able to as well. So until next time, God bless you and I'll see you later. Phil, what's up, man? I brought Mini Machine with me here for your critique of your images, which were outstanding, which are probably a lot better than this attempt at video for me so remember that i'm a street photographer not a videographer um that being said let's go into the images they were just they were super they were just really dynamic now i know you're from new york originally and it's nice to see that you didn't lose it you brought me back to chinatown on the midtown images just beautiful composition um you really worked the scene well i like how you you weren't afraid to take more than one shot of a given scene. So I saw different angles, you moved your feet. Um, I know you work with a fixed lens, so that makes it even harder, but that's even more impressive. Um, one thing that I did notice that I want you to work on is cutting off limbs. Sometimes it's unavoidable, especially in street photography, you really have to work with what you're given. But there were certain situations where I felt like all it took would just be to tilt the camera down or tilt the camera up. Um, cutting feet off, cutting off at the knees. Sometimes it works depending on the composition. Sometimes it's very distracting. But other than that, really, really, really good stuff. Um, the Fujifilm colors don't lie. Do have to point that out. You, you work the colors well. Um, when you did use black and white, um, it was beautifully done. So I think it ties into just how I feel about photography in general. Somebody that has a good eye for portraiture, a good eye for wedding, is naturally going to have a good eye for street. I don't think that changes. It's just little nuances here and there, making technical decisions, and really just working outside of your comfort zone, where you now aren't controlling every aspect of the images. You're being forced to work with what the streets give you, and I think you did a great job of that. So keep it up. I'd love to see you get back up here to New York. And uh, maybe next time we'll bring this guy out with us.